There are 179 million vehicles on the roads of the world. In 1965, about 24 million new cars were sold throughout the world. On the roads of Italy alone, there are more than 6 million motor vehicles, one for every nine inhabitants. And it's estimated that by 1968, this number will soar to 8.5 million. Nowadays, therefore, the motorist needs to become increasingly careful and responsible. Unfortunately, there are still too many motorists who believe their accidents just happen, caused by the whim of fate. And inevitably, this attitude leads to daredevil driving and dangerous situations. There are many things a customer considers when choosing a new car. Elegance, technological advance, lively performance, driving comfort. It's not often that a motorist buys a particular car because he thinks it's safer than another. But the modern motor car industry cannot ignore the safety question. One of the most difficult and expensive problems facing the industry today is the need to design and manufacture increasingly safe cars. Safety is considered by the designer of a new car right from the earliest stages of its development. It is indeed one of the basic elements in his work. When the new car has reached the prototype stage, Hundreds of tests are carried out, not only to check its performance under the least favorable conditions, but also to perfect all those individual items on which safety depends. An efficient heating system, for instance, provides comfort for the driver and passengers, and is of vital importance in ensuring safe motoring, even when temperatures are extremely low. Travelling for mile after mile over icy surfaces or across a frozen lake rarely tests a car's road holding. Thousands of miles of pave is one way of making sure that the seats and driving position are comfortable so the driver won't be overtired by the continuous stresses created by roads of this kind. Road holding on winding roads and on wet surfaces is accurately checked by testing the cars on specially built test circuits. Fiat investigates the reactions of a moving car meeting a strong side wind by ejecting a jet of water from the car at very high pressure. This generates by reaction a sideways thrust equivalent to a crosswind of 50 miles an hour. Meanwhile, in the labs, scientific development of the prototype continues. Every component in the vehicle is subjected to stresses simulating the most severe service conditions. Accelerated testing of this type gets results within a few days, which would take months and months of work to obtain on the road. One of the basic problems in vehicle safety is the resistance of the fuel tank to damage in a collision. A series of rear-end collisions establishes the best position for the fuel tank, and particular attention is paid to the efficiency of the flexible pipe between filler and tank. No leakage of any kind occurs even after severe impact, not even when the tank is full to the brim. Even the choice of a component, like a door handle, for instance, is closely linked with the question of safety. A door handle which protrudes too far is a positive danger skimming past an unwary pedestrian. Numerous tests repeated over and over again discover the safest solution which eliminates all danger. Special attention has to be paid to the effects of impact with the windscreen and to ensure the safety of driver and passengers. The front of a car body is fitted in turn with laminated and toughened windscreens against which a dummy is thrown. These tests and experiments pinpoint the different characteristics of the two types of windscreen in impact tests. The problem of residual visibility is also taken into consideration by simulating the sudden breakage of a windscreen while the car is moving. Much research is devoted to safety belts. Three types are tested in the presence of experts, medical experts among them. In the first test, a lap-type belt is used. A 
The car, with a dummy aboard, is catapulted forward at a speed of around 30 miles an hour and suddenly halted. Let's have another look at the same test, this time in slow motion. The second type of belt, now installed in the car, is the diagonal type. This test, seen again in slow motion, means the reactions of the dummy at the moment of impact can be carefully evaluated. The last test is designed to measure the effectiveness of the lap diagonal belt. The passenger's body is restrained at the shoulder and waist. So much for the driver. Now let's see how the car behaves. The front and rear sections of the car body should be deformable in an accident, while the centre section should remain undamaged. This is because two distinct phenomena occur when a collision takes place. An impact between the car and the obstacle, and an impact between the occupants of the car and the interior of the body. But if the front and rear of the body deform too easily, body repairs would be necessary all too frequently. On the other hand, an excessively rigid body would respond like a tank crashing at high speed against a rock. The tank wouldn't be damaged, but its occupants would be flung about violently inside and against interior panels. The aim is to provide a controlled degree of deformability to absorb a reasonable proportion of the impact energy, so that the whole violence of the impact is not passed on to the occupants. The ideal solution is a car like this, with front and rear compartments about 10 yards long, ensuring 100% protection to the occupants in a collision. But then you might have something of a parking problem. Moreover, you would have to travel rigidly anchored to the structure of the vehicle, rather like this. Under these conditions, the extremities would act as shock absorbers, while the occupants couldn't injure themselves on any part of the interior. Another effective protective system, which would provide shock absorption for the occupants rather than the car, would be to immerse them in a liquid. But then the driver would have to be not only a skilled motorist, but an expert skin diver as well. The manufacturer's task, then, is to try and provide the widest practicable margin of safety. And the best way of assessing the true extent of this margin is to reproduce accidents in the laboratory using real, complete cars. The problem was solved by using a catapult rig on which the most varied types of tests could be simulated. Here, a head-on crash between two 600s is being set up. Deceleration occurring in various points throughout the body shell is recorded by instruments. So that the behaviour of the occupants of the car can be studied, a dummy is used fitted with instruments. His name is Oscar. He originated in the United States. He's 5 foot 9 inches tall and weighs 176 pounds. His inner metal framework reproduces the basic architecture of a human male skeleton. The body is covered in a rubber envelope, and the scientific instruments are fitted in the head and thorax. These instruments are accelerometers, from which output signals are transmitted to complex multi-channel recording equipment. Oscar's makeup consists of a special paint, which subsequently enables the areas inside the bodywork with which the dummy has had contact to be identified, as well as showing where injuries would be inflicted on a human occupant. After the accident, the amount of telescoping which has taken place is measured using the numbered lines previously marked on the body as a basis.
particular attention is paid to the design of the doors. They must remain shut during a collision, but it's equally important that they should open easily afterwards. After the laboratory, tests are carried out on the road. At first, so that tests can take place at increasingly high speeds, the test car is pushed by another car and steered by a shaft linked with the test car's steering. At a given distance from the obstacle, the driver lets go of the steering wheel and the test car proceeds on its own. Later, to reproduce as realistically as possible any type of accident at any speed, Fiat devised a new system based on remote radio control. The pilot car is equipped with dual controls which govern the test car through radio signals. In the aerial of the pilot car, radio impulses are sent to the other, where a complex unit reproduces every movement of the driver. Thus, the test car is driven by an engineer at the wheel of the pilot car, from which he operates the pedals, steering and gear changing. This has the important advantage that the test car isn't simply thrown at the obstacle like an inert mass, but collides with it with all its mechanical units functioning properly. First gear is engaged, and the test car also engages first gear automatically. Off it goes. It builds up speed, it's heading straight for the obstacle at 70 miles an hour. This particular accident was staged to provide information on the efficiency of the engine mountings. From the results obtained, the technicians can draw valuable information for further advances in motor car safety. Almost any type of accident can be simulated. Every component, every part of a car can be searchingly investigated. This time, an 850 with our patient friend Oscar at the wheel will be sent crashing against another car positioned across the road. In addition to the wealth of information they will gather from this accident, the technicians will be able to select the safer of the two types of experimental door lock installed on the 850. In fact, in this particular crash, one of the two doors remained perfectly shut in spite of the deformation suffered by the body, but not the other. Before starting yet another trial, the test car is checked over. It must respond perfectly and obey the signals radioed from the pilot car like a well-behaved and obedient schoolboy. Once again, Oscar is ready to be sacrificed for our benefit. The engineers place him in the driver's seat and secure him in position with a combination lap diagonal belt. In addition to the usual technicians, a number of eminent medical men follow this particular test with professional interest. The engineers scrutinize the car to draw conclusions for the better safety of millions of flesh and blood Oscars. But now it's Oscar's turn. He's extracted from the car and placed delicately on a table at the disposal of the doctors in this unique outdoor surgery. Medical examination of the dummy indicates what injuries the vital organs of a human body would have suffered under similar conditions. To examine the safety features of a new model, a high-speed rollover is to be carried out. A power jack is mounted on the steering linkage. By means of radio impulses, a sudden and violent steering movement will be made, while at the same time, the brakes will be jammed on. These, of course, are conditions taken to the limit, movements which rarely occur in practice. The 124 will be remotely controlled from a pilot car. A number of tests were carried out at 60 miles an hour, but the car wouldn't turn over. Therefore, it was necessary to increase the speed to about 80 miles an hour to get the desired results.
intersection wasn't deformed in spite of the savage treatment it received. The roof wasn't crushed, the steering wheel didn't move. The doors remained closed, but now could be opened easily. And as soon as the starter is engaged, the mechanical components show that they too have happily survived this severe test. Two helicopters stand ready for takeoff at the side of the circuit. To extend the margin of safety still further, it's necessary to stage every type of accident. To reproduce a head-on collision between two remotely controlled cars, this system has been involved. And for the first time in tests of this kind, the radio control equipment is mounted in helicopters. These are exacting tests in extremely delicate instruments. Setting them up involves painstaking design effort and days and days of work. On board, everything is ready. The helicopters take off and fly to the test track to establish radio contact with the two test cars. The experiment gets underway, closely watched, yard by yard, second by second, by the research workers. At high speed, the two cars head for each other. Another test comes to an end. Another link is added to the long chain of experiments which will improve motor cars in general and increase the safety of all motorists in particular, all over the world. 